Hello, welcome to Soulprint Intuitive Tarot for August the 3rd. So, happy August. We made it through July. That's something. Okay, before I forget, because I'm a little, you know, scattered, I want to send out a very sincere and a huge thank you for those of you who have sent in donations. Um, you know, just surprises that show up. And I'm so grateful for them. They always catch me off guard. I always am just so humbled by them. Um, so I just wanted to specifically send a thank you out for that. And of course, to all of my subscribers for the likes and the thumbs up and the shares and the comments. Um, the support of Soul Print from you is amazing and I'm very grateful for it. And I thank you for it. And before I forget, um, a fellow viewer of yours sent me a link to um, a reader that is very new and, well, new to YouTube, I think. Um, and so I checked her out and she does uh, a couple things. She does sort of monthly um, tarot readings. So for those of you who like to do that and find out, you know, what the month looks like, she, I, I liked her stuff. I like her style for sure. She also put out a video though, that was called Crystals 101. And, um, I really encourage you to pop over Kelly Ferguson readings and check that video out. It, she really boiled it down to its simplest form, which of course is the best way to, you know, sort of teach or share any information. Um, and she specifically talked about uh, picking crystals or how you pick them or they pick you and um, programming them. So I encourage you to hop over and, um, check out her website or her YouTube's channel story and see if um, you can give her some support if you like some support if you like her stuff. So um, where we are, where are we, where are we? Okay, I want to look at Trump this week, okay, because, you know, it's not going to get better, right? So let's see if we can get a handle on what we can anticipate this coming week. Oh, and one more thing. Um, just so you guys know, when I do a reading, especially this kind of a reading, um, I really, really do function more as a channel, you know, as opposed to a strict tarot reader, which if you've been following me, you know, that's just how it is with me. Um, but because a lot of what I'm doing and saying is channeled, I honestly don't remember what I tell you. Like, I don't. Um, and so every once in a while, I get somebody, uh, you know, sending me a, a message and comments that said, wow, you were right on about that, or that was great. I can't believe how accurate it was. Um, don't hesitate to send me those, because truly, truly, um, when you're operate as a channel, that's exactly what you are, a channel, a vessel. And so a lot of it really, really doesn't stick. So Trump this week. I'm guessing it's going to be an interesting one because aren't they all? Come on down. I have a question. Okay, so we'll do one more quick little one of these. Trump this week. Trump this week. Trump this week. Okay, so anticipate, um, frankly, more turbulent times, more, you know, rocking on water kind of thing, energy. Um, and that is actually not only going to be with him, frankly, but it's going to be with some of the people around him. Um, some of those really staunch supporters have started to kind of, you know, just step back a little bit. Um, sometimes, you know, with the, um, like with the moving the election date, they push right back, but you're going to continue to see more and more of that. Apparently Mitch McConnell has told his senators that you do whatever you need to do that's going to get you elected. So if that means, um, you know, separating yourself from some of the stuff that Trump says and does, 
you need to do that to basically save yourself. Um, so you can expect a little bit, you know, some more defections. Um, there's going to be a lot of rumbling this week about the, um, the stimulus package. And, you know, it, <sighs> Trump is still trying desperately to hang on to this fantasy world that he lives in. But this week, there are going to be two, it looks like, kind of really specific things. I know not exactly what they are, but one of them is connected to legacies, to money, to inheritance, that kind of stuff. And this very much is striking me in this reading as a uh, as part of a stimulus package. The Four of Pentacles here is talking about him hanging on tight, tight, tight. The Page of Wands is about new communications that come out, new information that is coming out, and it is going to um, cause him to be even more distressed than he already is, um, have less sleep, which makes him even more erratic because, you know, Perhaps there's something besides Coke that he's consuming. I don't know. Just, you know, he doesn't sleep a lot. When he doesn't sleep a lot, he gets really agitated. So he takes something. It's a cycle, right? Um, so looks like it's he's going to be having a little bit of a really tough week as he sees people are pulling away from him. Worse, worse. Um, he sees that his opposition is really, really, really picking up steam now. You know, there are no more or, or very few where Biden is leading by one or two. Biden is leading by six, eight, 10, 12, 15 percent. And that number is going to continue to increase. <clears throat> and if I'm not mistaken, there should be some polls coming out today. And that always really, really rattles the boat and shakes him up. Um, there is going to be um, that impulse in him, you know, to charge ahead. He's not going to care. He doesn't care what the consequences are. He just wants to get this done because he wants this to be done this way. I really feels like a little bit of going into other um, democratic cities and, you know, sicking his sort of secret police force on people. Speaking of which, you know what, maybe it's just because I'm not American, but this is what I kind of don't get. So you have protesters protesting around federal buildings, which these Yahoo police are supposed to or are charged with protecting. So why do those people not just move to a city or state building to protest? Because at that point, if the if those goons kind of came after them and it wasn't even federal land, um, you know, that may also create some significant pushback. I just don't understand why um, they don't shift to a place where, frankly, it makes the cops look even 100 times worse than they, than they look now because they're not in any way even pretending to look like they are supporting or um, protecting a federal building. I just don't quite get that. But anyways, despite that, there's going to be this rush ahead and God only knows whether that is, um, you know, with the police, the magical police forces that run around with no insignia and white vans, them guys, or whether it is um, him pushing an idea that just doesn't make any sense, but he's going to push because that's all he knows how to do, right? I mean, you got to figure how stressful it must be behind the scenes in those campaign offices. Um, because he doesn't strategize. He doesn't really have any ideas. He just bullies people and screams at them and tells them to get it done. And he takes no responsibility for contributing to it getting done or even following the playbook once they figured out a way to get it done. So you're going to get some of that sort of charging ahead behavior. Um, but this is interesting because it looks as if um, there's going to be some female women um, news that's focusing and coalescing this week. Now, uh, I don't know, does Biden announce his VP? Possibly. I don't think that there's a definite date on that yet. 
um, are one of the female uh, governors or attorney generals or mayors in the states that he's sort of going after? Is that is he going to get some real serious pushback from them? Is it possible that there might be something we haven't even thought about or that's not on our radar at the moment? But there's definitely going to be um, female energy that's sort of coming at him. And there is definitely an impact on his either uh, popularity, his polling numbers, um, people who are, have, are are moving strongly, more strongly away from, from supporting him. But you can look for some interesting female energy and dynamics. Sorry about that. So, strong female energy in the news this week. And it's not going to sit well with him. And, you know, this is the thing. Whenever he feels um, threatened or, you know, whatever it is, there's a female who's looking more superior, perhaps understands him, you know, or is doing something that he doesn't like. Um, they're nasty. He calls them all sorts of horrible names. And because that's the best he's got, right? So again, um, that's not going to work for him. It's really, really not. The countdown has now started. Um, you know, he has less than um, nine or just a few over 90 days or right around 90 days until the election. People who haven't been paying attention are starting to pay attention. And you know what? That kind of language, that kind of treatment of women is not going to go over well, even with some of those, you know, supporters who tend to let him get away with a lot. Um, so anticipate some sort of pushback coming um, as a result of his behavior in terms of um, a, a woman or, or a couple of women and their more powerful and stronger energy. And he's really, really going to feel threatened. You know, he, nothing, I swear, maybe except for Putin. I don't know that there's much that scares Trump more than a really smart woman. He certainly doesn't marry them. No offense intended to any of them. But boy, when he comes up against somebody who really knows her stuff, he doesn't do so well. So there's the trouble, right? So there is the um, sort of, he's thinking he's winning with this behavior, but he's really, really not. And more people are going to just sort of quietly stroll away from him because it really feels as if, um, his attacks have become so un unhinged and the stuff that comes out of his mouth is so crazy. Um, so that's sort of where we're going from here. Okay, so let's see if we can get some clarity. Let's maybe take a look and see if we can um, find out how maybe his donors are, are doing and feeling, the, the people who are supposed to be supporting him. How are they coping with not only what's going on now, his, you know, inability to deal with the stimulus package and just, you know, it, it boggles the mind, you know, um, because he's hurting the very people who he's trying to convince to vote for him. And this nonsense about, oh, you know, if you pay people more in a week than they earn, you know, what motivates them to get off of um, unemployment? Well, you know what? Like tons and tons and tons and tons of the people who are on unemployment right now, they have full-time jobs. They have careers. They were the ones that were laid off from this corporation or that big company or whatever it is. These people um, are desperate to get off of those things and have the economy return, except, you know, Trump's really bad at that. And so, you know, they're in a position and uh, it's ridiculous. Every time I hear it, it agitates me because, you know what, let's say you are making at your job, you know, $45,000 a year, which is not a huge amount of money, but, um, if you're not making it, it's a very large amount of money. And so 
$2,400 a month is really just keeping you barely afloat. Okay? So, again, one more thing. You know, this is something I kind of don't understand. It, when I am gearing up to do my readings lately, especially the last few of them, um, I keep on hearing the same message sort of over and over and over again, which is push back. There needs to be more pushback. And it almost needs to take place about just about every little thing that happens. So let's push back against Trump. Um, not taking any part at all in the stimulus package, although God knows he's more of a hindrance. Let's push back on the senators who tootled off for a long weekend break because, you know, um, they just feel entitled. Let's push back on some of the stuff that is going on that is just, we're so tired, we're so exhausted with this. And, but we know, we know that when Trump is shoved against a wall by um, citizens' opinions, he backs down. He backs down. And so it just feels like going forward, things that have sort of been allowed to just slide because you can't expect any better, it's starting to feel like this may be gearing up towards the time where you really want to start getting that senator's phone number on speed dial or get his email front and center, whatever it takes. Um, just feels like there needs to be some momentum building up, not, um, not, not for violence, not for anything. The message, honestly, is do your jobs to all of them. Do your job. Okay, so looking at Trump, um, he is going to experience some, um, some difficulties this week. It feels like there's going to be more information coming out about some sort of a quid pro quo. Wow, aren't we all shocked and amazed? Um, He's going to lose the support of someone. Now, whether we know who that is, I'm not sure at this point. But somebody who he um, trusts or leans on, depends, I'm not sure, um, is going to pull their support or become significantly um, reduced in the grand scheme of things. So there's definitely... Um, some upheavals coming for him because again it creates that behavior of him being you know childlike and having a temper tantrum and make no mistake people around the world are watching this and just quietly like shaking their heads um but so he's it there's looks like there's going to be a couple things this week that really set him off right one is this sort of female energy one is this this Ten of Pentacles, whether that's the stimulus package or, um, but it, it has to do with money. It has to do with votes. It has to do with paperwork and documentation. Um, and it doesn't really feel like he's going to get any um, amazing news about those areas. And this is the other thing you can kind of anticipate from Trump in the next week, maybe a little, you know, a few days, give or take. Um he, there's going to be another instance where you see him walking from point A to point B and he is pouting and behaving like a petulant child. Now, we've all gotten used to that, um, but look for sort of new footage of the same story because uh, I see that sort of um, popping up too. He's going to be really defensive. Um, and it's, it's not going to work for him because it doesn't matter. I mean, for goodness sake, the re-election campaign suspended itself so that they could reevaluate what the heck their message is supposed to be because the ones that they were sending out weren't going over very well. Um, but even if the, and this is what you got to remember, even if the election committee, the people working to get him re-elected, 
Even if they change their approach and they change their attitude, he is not going to. He is as stuck, as stuck, as stuck is going to be, okay? He doesn't change. He's not flexible. And that's another thing. I just need to vent for a minute. Okay, so this is the thing. I'm not saying that I'm right, and I'm not saying I'm going to be right. But I have been very, very clear in my head for a very long time that Trump really um, doesn't stand a very strong chance of winning this second term. And I'm aware that there is talk out there um, about how, you know what, it looks like he could pull it off. He could get that stroke of luck. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, <coughs> it will really, he can sneak by with another win. Okay. I would like somebody who, who has that understanding to explain to me what kind of magic Trump has up his arse that would allow him to, on a dime, recover, not five points, not 10 points, 15, 20 points behind, behind Biden. What magic can he possibly pull out that is going to going eradicate three and a half years of behavior, that is going to magically fix the fact that you guys are teetering on a depression that is going to just fix the fact that God only knows how many millions are going to have the, have the coronavirus before November 3rd. But, you know, you're at four and a half million now. You can easily guess five and a half, six. And God knows how many more souls are going to be lost. What, is, what magic is it that, that makes gives him this amazing good luck? That just turns all of that around. I don't understand it. And every time I try to look at that, I just hit a wall. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not saying, listen to me, I'm right. And I'm not saying, they're not saying what I like, so they're wrong. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, I just don't understand it logically. Never mind esoterically. Come on back down. I finished that rant for the day. Okay, so, and we've got the Queen of Swords here. And that typically um, is about the incoming vice president. So um, what, when that announcement happens, whether it is this week <clears throat> or early next week or late next week, whenever it happens, um, whoever that person is, has real star power, has, um, there's, there is just going to be something about her that really solidifies Biden's, um, you know, fight to the White House, okay? So, and, it, and it's going to cause a lot of evaluation or reevaluation in some Republican circles. Um, and so that, you know, that's going to be... Um, something we're going to want to be watching for, for sure, because it definitely feels, you know, and again, there's all this talk out there. You know, I'm telling you, these TV stations and radio stations, they need to fill the time. And so sometimes the things that they choose to fill the time with um, is phenomenally frustrating. So um, there's all this talk, all of this talk about what happens if Trump won't leave the White House. I've said it before, I'll say it again. At the point where Joe Biden is sworn in, there he is the president. They will simply have him removed if he's actually physically there, which I'm not convinced he will be. Um, if, for whatever reason, there is so much shenanigans going on with um, the vote that <clears throat> there is no clear presidential winner, Nancy Pelosi steps in. This is your constitution, people. There isn't, the, same with this, you know, let's postpone the election. You're not allowed to. Your constitution is unbelievably clear that it is the first Tuesday following the first Monday. Simple as that. There's no discussion about unless Trump is president. Um, so please be very careful 
that you don't get wrapped up in the stuff that really is just about filling airtime. And understand that if it came out of Trump's mouth or that Kaylee, Kaylee, whatever her name is, or frankly, the administration, the people around Trump, you know, look at it realistically and objectively. There's stuff that they're just not going to be able to get away with. They're just not. So I think that part of what's going on is, again, this sense of reevaluation with other Republicans around him. And they're really trying to get um, figured out what's going on because you know what? I don't care. But when you are a hundred no, less than a hundred days away from election and you have to suspend your advertising campaigns because you're not getting your message across, or worse, the people who are hearing your message don't like it. Please tell me how you are going to somehow swing 20 points. Don't fall into the trap. It is stressful. It is exhausting. Go within and stay in that place. And remember, 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 you are not sending somebody away. You are welcoming somebody in, okay? Because all of that bits and bots of, of sort of negative energy, stress energy about Trump, um, you know, angry energy, like all of that stuff is energy. And it will attract more of the same. And that, frankly, in my opinion, is how he got elected in the first dang place, never mind the whole Russia thing, because he, there was so much resistance to him and that energy built and it attached on to like energy and that became amplified and amplified and amplified, but the universe doesn't hear negatives. Remember that. So you don't want somebody out, you want to welcome somebody in, okay? Um, but you really need to stay centered. Don't get caught up. And you know what? Listen, uh, Russia's still doing what Russia's doing. And they're going to pump it up and do more and more of it faster and faster because the election is coming. Um, so just be really careful that you're kind of keeping yourself centered. And if something just doesn't ring true, it just doesn't, you can't figure out how logically that makes sense, um, then you need to really. First of all, ask yourself why you're, one, giving this a lot of attention, and two, why you're even listening to this stuff in the first place. Um, you know, don't allow your fear to trigger to be triggered, okay? Because it, it just keeps you out of the loop. It keeps you detached, and fear becomes amplified. That feeling that you're never going to escape this. We're never going to get out of this. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know what? You have the Six of Swords here telling you, you can move your country into calmer, steadier water. You can remove the mercenaries, or as many of them as are up for re-election right now. You can make changes by voting, and you can vote those people out who are only interested in lining their own pockets. And the trick is that you move forward. You keep on moving forward. You don't get stuck in a defeatist attitude. You don't get afraid. You don't, you don't. You stay positive. You stay hopeful. And you know, not you think or you hope, but you know that there's going to be a new president welcomed into the White House. Keep those emotions under control. Okay, so um, it looks as if there's going to be, I don't know, I don't think um, there's any sort of legal stuff coming out for Trump. I think next week there's going to be um, something going on in the courts about his taxes. But definitely looks like there's going to be, um, I don't know, is it more lawsuits? Is it stuff going on behind the scenes? You know, is it another try to decimate, I don't know, Obamacare or whatever. Um, but there's definitely some of that going on. And again, when people um, hear about it, there's going to be, a, you know, sort of a reaction to it. But again, push back. Don't just react. 
make that phone call, send that, that message, whatever it is and whatever you can do. Um, you can't, you can't let go right now. You know why? Because this is what's coming for you. Good news. Ace of Pentacles. This is, remember, Pentacles are money for sure. Um, but there are also other things that are abundance related. So, votes, polls, um, all of that kind of stuff. So if those of you who watch this channel are hearing good news, that means it's good news for your side. And you know what? Every time there's too much good news in a row, slam bam, he says or does something crazy to distract attention back to him. You know, he really, really is that person who honestly believes that any publicity is good publicity. What is that? As long as they spell your name right. It's so sad that in the Oval Office, you you have a man who literally views the presidency as a reality show with cliffhangers um, and that so many people around him um, have fed into that ridiculous nonsense that he believes. So um, that is what I know about that. Thank you so much for being here, um, and you'll see me again in a couple of days. Take care. Be well. Bye-bye.